enough for turning points and curve sketching. We now want to get into the applications of differentiation in calculation of velocity and acceleration. We recall that velocity is equal to change in displacement over time taken for the change to take place. So that when we are given a displacement time graph, the gradient, by definition, gives us the velocity. So for the displacement time graph, displacement s and time t change in s we call it delta s over change in time delta t is equal to velocity by definition so from here we say velocity is equal to small change in time over small ch small change in displacement over small change in time which is equal to ds over dt so v is equal to ds over dt and ds over dt is differentiating displacement with respect to time. From above, given displacement s as a function of time t written s is a function of time t, then ds over dt is equal to velocity which we have seen from the graph above example if s is equal to 5t five t s displacement s is equal to 5t plus 3t squared minus 2 find v when t is equal to 2 so from the above definition we found that ds over dt differentiating displacement with respect to time is equal to the velocity v which is equal to 15 t squared plus 60 so v the expression for velocity is equal to 15 t squared plus 60 at t is equal to 2 we substitute for this value in the velocity equation v will be equal to 15 2 squared plus 6 into 2 and that gives us a velocity of 60 plus 12 and that is 72 Assuming the distance is in meters and time in seconds, 
then the velocity will take the units 72 meters per second. Another example, given the height of an object thrown the height of an object thrown vertically upwards is given by the equation s is equal to 12t squared minus 12t plus 1. Calculate the maximum height reached before it starts to fall freely. So usually, when an object is thrown up, at maximum height, it stops so that the velocity will be zero before it starts to come down. So there is a momentarily, the particle will be momentarily at rest at maximum height. So therefore, we need to find the time when after which it hits the maximum height. So we have been given the equation S is equal to 12T squared minus 12T plus 1. We need velocity which is ds over dt. Twenty-four t minus twelve. At maximum height, v is equal to zero. So it means twenty-four t minus 12 is equal to 0. So t is 12 over 24, which is a half. So the time is a half. So we substitute the value of t into the value of displacement. So that we can get the maximum height s will be 12 a half squared minus 12 into a half plus 1. And this gives us 3 Minus six plus This gives us negative 2.
Let us now look at acceleration. By definition, acceleration is equal to change in velocity over time taken for the change to occur. For a velocity time graph, as illustrated below, where we have velocity v velocity v against time t <coughs> delta v over delta t the gradient change in velocity over time taken which is dv over dt is equal to acceleration a so in other words a is equal to dv over dt where velocity is differentiated with respect to time. So that, in general, if we have a function of velocity, velocity as a function of time, then dv over dt is equal to acceleration a. Let's look at an example. The question requires us to obtain the expression for acceleration given v is equal to t cubed minus 3t squared plus 3t minus 1. From above, we observe that differentiating velocity with respect to time dv over dt is equal to acceleration which will be equal to 3t squared minus 60 plus 3. So the expression for acceleration a is 3t squared minus 60 plus 3. Similarly, for the second case, v is 5t squared minus 15t. dv over dt is equal to 10t minus 15. And this is equal to acceleration. So a is 10t minus 15. Let's look at another example. The velocity v meters per second of a particle after t seconds is given by v is equal to 5t squared minus 2t. Find one the times at which the particle is instantaneously at rest and two the acceleration during the times in one above. So what we know is that at instantaneous rest At instantaneous rest, velocity is equal to zero. 
So the expression for velocity we are given, we equate it to 0. So 5t squared minus 2t is equal to 0. t into 5 minus 2 into 5t minus 2. into 5t minus 2 is equal to 0. So either t is equal to 0 or t is equal to 2 over 5. So these are the times at which the particle will be instantaneously at rest. Acceleration during these times, we need an expression of acceleration. Given V is equal to 5t squared minus 2t, differentiating V with respect to t, dV over dt is 10t minus 2. And this is equal to the acceleration. So in other words, the expression for acceleration is 10t minus 2. So we need to substitute various times at t is equal to 0. At t is equal to 0, a will be 0 minus 2 which is equal to negative 2 so the acceleration will be negative 2 similarly at t is equal to 2 over 5 a will be 10 into 2 over 5 minus 2 and this gives us 4 minus 2 and this is 2. Because we have been given the units that the velocity is in meters per second and t in seconds, then our unit for acceleration will be in meters per second squared meters per second square.